folks, I'm Bupay here, and today we're going to be looking at the Potable.kr level MD5 calculator. So this is a 200 point challenge, um, and this is a live uh, hack through, so I haven't seen this before, so let's dig right in. So it says, we made a simple MD5 calculator as a network service, find a bug and exploit it to get a shell, download from Potable.kr, select it, hatch. Uh, hit this service shares the same machine with the Ponable.kr web service. Interesting. So there may be something uh, interesting there, and it's running at that location. So uh, I have it here. Uh, this has this hash, and if I run a file on it, so it tells us it's an L32 bit executable, dynamically linked. They didn't give us libc, so that's interesting. But, okay, so we'll run strings on it, see what it does. Mm. Joy. So, uh, we can see, so these B BIO, curl, write, push, these are, I believe, uh, OpenSSL function calls. It's been a long time since I've done OpenSSL programming, but they all start with this BIO, binary IO maybe, but do that. Anyways. Uh, ceiling, exit, SRAN, puts, time, and then it looks like we come now to the actual um, less than or equal to U, percent 0 to X, this looks like part of a format string, MD5 data, percent X, welcome to free MD5 calculating service, are you a human, input a CAPTCHA, great, wrong CAPTCHA, welcome, you're authenticated, encode your data with base64, then paste me, thank you for using our service, echo date, it's a log, okay, interesting, um, great, okay. So this, uh, so I think then this is anything interesting off there. So let's just run it locally to make sure we can run it. Are you human? Input CAPTCHA, what if I say hello? It's wrong CAPTCHA. Okay, I think it means we just need to copy and paste this. And welcome, you are authenticated. So it wants base64 data, so let's echo uh, hello world and type that through. world, so if you don't know basic support encoding, you should look at it, it's used in a lot of things. MD5 of your data is this, thank you for using our service. Alright, not much stuff, so when we think about what are possible ways, and actually I guess the other thing we should do is check and do um, this netcat here to make sure we can actually get the same thing here, are you a human, input the captcha, uh, base 64. So there's only two parts where we can actually give data to this program, the CAPTCHA and the base64 encoded version of our data. So whatever exploit it is or the way that we can exploit this means that we have to do that using um, our input there. So, okay, nice, our data is the same, that's good. All right, so then let's look at our binary. So. You know what? Let's do a readl a or a, yeah readl a hash. Oh, and we'll run check stack on it. Always important to see. Okay, partially root. So it's using a canary and nx, but it's not uh, position independent executable. So as long as we have fixed memory locations, that's good. Um, okay, so. Not executable in Canary means an overwrite on the stack is probably less likely. are all of the library functions so the global offset table is fairly large so we can see that this mp5 and NIT, these are all in the OpenSSL um, library functions so there's gonna be multiple libraries that's gonna call and open so uh, you know who knows maybe that'll come handy for us uh, the dynamic symbol table and it does have symbols so that's nice so we'll get some uh, that'll at least be easier when we're reversing this binary and all right, there we go. All right, 
So we'll start at main. And it's got a nice main function, so that's easy. All right, let's use this decompiled version. Um, so the, again, our handy dandy set debuffs, as we talked about before, um, it's calling puts. Welcome to the free MD5 calculating service. Ooh, it seeds. Okay, so this this was my my suspicion that using this uh, so it's seeding SRAN with the output of time, and then uh, so maybe because we know that it's executing on a certain server, that we need to use the time of that server to try to do some guessing. Uh, that's just my initial thoughts. Okay, bar four equals my hash, are you human, input capture percent D bar four. Okay, so this is that capture that we looked at. Um, then do a scanf, and you can see that it's using this memory location because it doesn't know that that memory location is a, um, yeah, so it's so small that it uh, hasn't got that as a string yet. So when we do that, do it as percent D, uh, then we go back, that so it does percent D. So read it in an integer which is going to be the thing that we just input and if bar 4 is not equal to the bar 8 put out the wrong capture. It's not equal to the base. Oh because it's an integer that so yeah that's fine. Okay but that seems very interesting. We may have to dig into this my hash function to see what's going on there. But that seems straightforward no overflows there. And then welcome you're authenticated put your database for the pace me process hash puts and then system echo fax tick date append to log. Interesting. Yeah, so it's creating this log of the system. So I guess I must have just created this log by doing it locally. Yes. So let's first look at this my hash function. Stack canary, setting up the stack canary. So we can, that number is 100% predictable, so. Okay, let's run this hash program with uh, L grades to see what's going on in the library functions. Are you human? Input this capture. So yeah, we can see a first call the time, so we saw that call the time. And then it's calling the SRAN with the result of that time. And then it's calling brand what's the seven, seven times. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Um, and then we put our captcha and then it says scan it, puts, puts, get character, put your data. And 
then we get, okay, I read that in, it calls fmem open, it calls vf64, dio new, dmp, push, set flags, read, free all, f close, malloc, 33, init, update, s read of def. RC is in the start, the RX14, that's going to be our stack. So, while get character is not equal to new line, clearly this is messing up, so I need to figure out what's going on. CX repetition store the context of the CX repetition, so for the number of repetitions, so ECX is the number of repetitions. ECX in this case is the X mean. Store the contents of EAX into where EEI points to incrementing or decrementing EEI. Oh, it's, it's basically a big M set, so it's setting the 80 characters in this bar point C. It must be that. Yeah, so that would be this. M set of the characters of this part to C point C X And then go into here call get character. Oh, it's not equal to alright, that was interesting. Okay. So that's what that was. Okay. calling get character with get character. So get character returns character.
is just leaping over. Gets into their four hundred characters. So F gets. Okay, so. Okay, so there's other arguments for F gets. F gets into there with X four hundred. So it gets an overwrite up to there, F gets plus four hundred. Then the, the, the thing we want to check if we did this last time. So what does so get S uh, reads it at most one less than the size of the character frame. So it's gonna read in three hundred and X and then put in the last zero for us. So it can't use any tricks or like uh, unknown characters or something like that. But, uh, okay, but what we can do so it's gonna call that and then it's going to load effectively the rest of the buck into VAX, it's gonna move VAX into VBX. And then it's going to it's a zero. It's not going to be zero. Zero out. Then it's set in buffer. Um, and then both like this. So get that to the buffer. Yeah, I wonder what happens in the database. So this is 64 to the It's passed in with local block, which we just read into our local buffer on the stack. And so then this result of the 64 to the Happens, I guess the question now is what happens if I put in bad, bad data? Okay, good. So it looks like it. So R zero is basically for argument one is the global buffer. So argument one global buffer and this means argument four. Okay, 
so what I think I should probably do to get a better handle on what's going on and what this data is looking like is start debugging this and start going through. Um, let's and then we can figure out um, okay, where we want to be. I want to be in. Okay, so I'm in process hash. So I basically don't have to know what's happening. Is this is basically calling, essentially calling memset, and it could be that memset is. Oh yeah, so because I'm single stepped. So this is cleaning up all of the, because I input the uh, data to scan up to read in the character, and so I put in the character, they put in the line. So this just eats up all the lines. All right, now we're zeroing out the dig buffer. So now we've moved everything on the stack. If we look, uh, the stack pointer is, so the variables, the call into m gets is this buffer, which is 0804b0e0. So that's going to be um, yeah, okay, perfect. So I just actually picked up this trick from an article I just read, uh, doing info symbol and then the address tells you that this is gbuff. So Know that that's keep up there, and then um, so then if we go to f gets the character buffer into the int and then the string. Okay, so that's going to read up to 400 text characters. Um, I want to step over that. Now it's waiting for 400 text characters for me. Um, so what happens if I print? So now if I check that out, now I can see bunches of A's, right? And I know it will be you know, 400 X, uh, oh, less than 400, so 400 by one, so that'd be 400. Okay, my math is clearly off. All right, so good amount of 
gbuffs. All right, so I just read in all of that. Where am I at now? Uh, okay. Right, so now I am in another one of these. Okay, so I just called that get. Now I'm going to apparently for some reason clean my buffer again. Now we're about to call base 64 decode, so the stack has uh, this 0804B0E0 and then this FFFFCFBC. So this is the um, stack variable that we're passing in the base 64 decode. So at this point, I kind of want to treat uh, base 64 decode as purely a black box just to see what happens. I may need to dig in here to figure out exactly what's going on, but what I want to know is when I give this 400 hex in something that's not base64 encoded, uh, how does that actually output into my buffer? So, uh, so did I just skip over it? Of course I didn't because I put a breakpoint there. All right. Uh, so move up. So this is the nice thing. BT or the backtrace to show you the backtrace on the stack so you can move up the stack and then go next instruction from there. So that would uh, Okay. All right. And next is one. Now that just got called, so now the question is I want to look at my stack and figure out what happened and what changed there. So, interesting. Okay. So it tried to make, let's say it tried to base 64 decode my data. Not what I put in. Okay. It looks like it got all the way up. Buff. Yeah, okay, so from this buff to the canary. So I got canary twenty X so I was gonna give you E minus this is five point four. did completely uh, take out the canary. Interesting. Okay. So I definitely overwrote him. Overwrote significantly over my buffer. So yeah, you can see that my backtrace is completely messed up. Okay, so this is good. This is good. Um, so I've not only overwritten so I overwritten. So 
over at the Canary Plus. So, yeah. going to take, so what's EAX here? EAX is 2FF, oh this is going to be the size, uh, so it's not going to be quite as rough as it is. So it's size, and then it moves EAX onto the stack. Um, EAX, EAX onto the stack. Address EVP minus 20C. It's buff. Okay, so it's going to calculate the MV5 of all those characters. It's then going to tell us. It's going to calculate the MV5. It's going to get the result back. It's going to count MV5. It's probably something we can't mess with or change because. It's uh, looks like the size being passed to it is, looks like it's calculated correctly. So we'll go to that value that it is. Return for basic size of the buffer, so I was wondering you know, what the size of the buffer is. It's fine. Okay. in all right, 767 okay so it did try to pay 64 t code all of my a's so I can give it I guess I can give it whatever value I want Yes, what's the question is what's the uh, base 64 because it's like only gives 400 hex, which really is 1024 characters base 64 encoded. So I can pretty much control in base 64 encode the string uh, to inject what I want into the uh, into the code. The question is what do I do with that? So because we have this lovely canary here. Okay. So so now I should get this stack check fail because clearly this stack check should fail because I completely blocked the stack. Printf with the MD5 of the data and the argument name is not in here. So now we're going to call free on no freeing that string that we just allocated. So then we 
to EBP minus zero XC into EAX. Failed, and then we can move this over to there. Um, second one, yeah. Okay. So. We can calculate the distance between Okay, so the difference between my canary and the buffer so. so I want to do five twelve plus White space is not significant. It takes 64, so it's very unhappy. Alright, so I'm going to call base 64 to the code on that little string. So I'm about to so we should. So what I'm testing here is can I control what gets over. Two characters are doing. Uh, it's going to be my base 64 output, and that will be decoded into 512 plus 4. So that will let me go right there. Um, okay, so I think I'm seeing a path forward, but I want to just look at this just to make sure my intuition is correct. So right now, if we look at EBP minus 12, so you can see the canary is 0, 0, 6. E9, 0, 9, 2, 6. And then the buffer is at 4. All right, good. Okay. So now if we do a 1, 2, 3, 4, 2, 3, All right, now that comes back. Now we should, OK, great. So now if we look at our buffer, all of our 61, so we're overriding all of the input, all the 616167, all that fun stuff. So now, but we have this problem where we'll keep hitting the stack connector. 
right? So now if I continue, I'll eventually get a stacks matching detected, hash terminated. And this should be the same case, but I'm not sure that I'll get the standard error. So this is why we have to be careful when we're testing it locally versus not. But if I try to go here and say, this is my value, we're Doesn't show us. Okay, thanks. So it says stacks matching detected. So I home MD5 calculator, MD5 calculator terminated. Okay. So what? Okay. So I think I see the way forward now. Um, I believe what we're going to have to do is so we have the canary on the stack. So basically, there's um, so this canary is randomly generated when the process starts up. So the idea is we will need to, in order to successfully um, create a ROP payload and be able to uh, control this process, we need to deal with and defeat the canary. And so the, uh, there's two main ways to do that. One way is if you, so a uh, process gets a canary value only when it uh, starts up, and then it gets a random canary value. So if you have a server that allows you a lot of different requests and even if it forks your request the canary will still be the same in the child port so there's a really cool it's called the brock or blind brock there's actually a way to figure out you can brute force the canary bit uh, byte by byte to figure out what the canary is unfortunately we don't have that here because we don't have that continual trying capabilities um, so the other way that i'm thinking is thinking about this whole program and what is the other thing that it does, well clearly this uh, input CAPTCHA is something that is incredibly dumb in terms of an actual CAPTCHA. This is not going to stop a human from detecting this, so what, uh, because obviously or it's not going to stop a uh, program from attempting this because they just copy this and paste it in there. But we know that the SRAN function is seeded with time, and then the my hash calls ran a certain number of times. So is it, I'm wondering if it's possible to um, essentially try to determine what's the canary based on what the hash value is. So if we could maybe Yeah, try to reverse engineer and go backwards, but I'm not sure. So I'm gonna uh, pause it here and do a little research to figure out uh, the different types of ways of breaking canaries. And I'm back. So I did some research. I looked at um, how canaries are generated on uh, on Linux systems, and essentially they're read from dev u random. So I don't feel like that's the approach to take. Um, and so basically the canary is randomly generated every time we, sh it should be randomly generated every time we talk to the process. Um, going back, let's see, to the, um, the service there, shares the same machine with the clinical.kr web service. Which I don't really understand why that's important. Um, it is, it's running there. Um, okay, so uh, digging around, I kind of found this calculate decoded length, which is supposed to calculate uh, what the length of the decoded string is going to be, the base64 string, so that they can, uh, and this is used with base64 decoding, it's the first calculate that, the length of that string uh, to save it in its decoded length, which is then returned from the function. Um, and this is used in process hash, because we're calling this, then we're storing this in the decoded size, and then we're passing this to the decoded size in the calc mp5 method. So I did some experiments, and I saw that when we passed in garbage uh, base64 values like this, uh, I believe it ended up being constant, but that's actually something interesting. Let's check that. Yes, okay, it did end up being constant. Um, so, 
I believe when I checked this, when we put in garbage base 64, it doesn't actually copy the contents. But um, what I just had a thought about is what if, so if we can control this value that's base 64 decoded, we can then control this MD5 that gets uh, decoded. So we can basically be able to MD5 more stuff on the stack than we actually copy there. So essentially, I'm wondering, this is kind of a Hail Mary if can essentially leak maybe the canary byte by byte using this MD5 calculation and then calculate it from there. But uh, that would actually require that the canary be constant. But I think this is an interesting, interesting approach. I have no idea if this is going to lead anywhere. I also looked into this uh, stack check fail function to see if there's some way we could uh, maybe corrupt that. I'm not 100% uh, sure that. So it goes. So let's see what we can do here. Um, kind of thinking about if this decode gets us into this uh, buffer, this buff on the stack. The question is, I don't really think there's anything interesting we can do from here. Um, is there anything we want to? I'm not sure. We don't I believe we don't use anything that lives above that buffer later on. So we don't. So we can see here. That our write is going up, so the only thing we're going to overflow is the canary. We don't overflow any of these other variables. So, so anyways, let's uh, check that out. So let's just see if we can get in some bad values in here. So I was looking up how, essentially how this um, how good a decode length is done. It's a pretty uh, dense function, so I'm just going to assume it's similar-ish to code that I found here, I'm trying to the decode length, so I take length times 3 divided by 4. So essentially what I want, let's see, is I want an input, I want to give it some invalid input that's not base 64 proper encoding. Actually, no, let's do, I don't know where I want to do, I want to see. Right, right here, and I want to see what different inputs can give this value of this count decoding length. So let's just run the program. So I know, let's say percent is a character. Characters getting eight, and then my MD5. Okay, good, good, good. Okay. MD5 data of eight characters on the stack at that location. And remember, those have been zeroed out, so this makes sense uh, that we won't be able to do that there. So, what I want this value to be is I want to in main. Process hash. I want to do five twenty four. So one is twelve. So I want to do five twelve plus one. Basically, I want that length to be five thirteen. So I can just get that to work. I want to do five thirteen uh, times four. So six eighty. So let's see what happens if I do 684 of those percents. What's that system call? Let's break this. All right. So now I have 684 garbage values. Okay, great. 
Just MD5, you should be MD5 in the whole thumb or everything that's on the stack. Plus, um, and actually, so let's look at this. So we are um, we're basically 14 code. So if I go up, Look, examine BP minus five point four. So EBP, so everything is all zeroed out as we can see. So I should be doing so EBP, so this address basically plus five thirteen. And that's going to include so the five thirteen byte is it should be the zero byte of here. This is oh, this is the there. Let's see if that is 12. Yeah, so that's that AD 2404. Yes, okay, perfect. So that should be the same value because it should be doing. So now if I do a break. Right after, right before calc MD5, we can see that it's going to calculate MD5 value to you. And okay, so it's going to calc MD5 of this 201 characters. So the value here, step over that, it's going to return dollar sign AX. It's going to return. So that's the string. So I believe this is the same string that I had. And now if I do this against the actual, we should get the same value because I'm essentially reading some values off the stack. So if I do So that was uh, 513 if I want to do 514 times 4 divided by 3, I'll need 685 of these characters. 685. And so what that meant, what that means is that this tells us that the last character of the canary value is always the 0, 0. So let's restart this, put a value in there. Okay, so this then should give us that the calculated value is it should be 202. So this is going to get us the MD5 of all the zeros plus the second byte of the canary. And so continue, 864 decode. So now we can see that this still all zeros, and the canary value is going to be here, and so, this is interesting, okay, so then I continue, and then there's instruction after that, so calculate the MD5, so now the MD5 is different because it includes that value, that extra and we'll see that that value should be different every time. So then the question, and really why I'm doing this, is I want to see, if I connect to their server, what is this MD5 value going to be? And it's going to be different every time. Because essentially what I'm leaking here is the MD5 of all those zeros plus the second byte of the canary. So if it's the same hash value, I can actually break and brute force that value. Um, so we can see that the MD5 now is different, and then Let's see what happens if I go back one more time. Okay, 
So it is different every time. So this is a good, um, a good validation on our part that uh, they're not using a static canary value. see that when we do what's it, 684 characters, we get this 70-0A, which I believe should be the MD5 of null. Uh, but when we give one more character 685, this gives us different MD5s every time we're doing it. So the interesting thing is I could, so if I was doing this in a loop, I could essentially use this MD5, and so now, Basically, I can brute force what's all zeros plus all different bytes. I can MD5 that, that's only 256 tries. And so I can figure out and leak that byte of the canary. And I can actually keep doing that um, byte by byte if the canary value is not changing. But I know the canary value is actually changing. And that is where now we run into this uh, big problem. Where now, so I validated that the that that byte is, and even if I, let's say I do like a pre-image attack and figure out all the MD5s of all the possible values or something crazy like that, uh, it still doesn't help me because it gives me this MD5 of the data before it's actually useful. So, um, yeah, that's a bummer. So anyways, this was my, my attempt. Maybe I think the other thing is going to be to study this, uh, their hash function that they're doing. My, so I definitely know that if we go back to the main function, all right, if we go back to main, we know that the, we're calling time, which outputs if we look that this returns the time as the number of seconds since the epoch, so this is the uh, Unix timestamp. Um, so this is a, a second value. And we're passing that to srand, which when we look at this value, it's uh, the srand value is Setting its arguments as the C for a new sequence of pseudo random numbers returned by Rand. These sequences are repeatable and find S Rand. Yes, okay, so basically the output of Rand will be the same. So I believe, let's see if I can do this. I'm not sure if this will work. But I think if I do this netcat very quickly in multiple terminals, um, it should give me this roughly the same value if. that it's possible to, I mean, maybe I'll have to look at it, but I don't think it's possible to reverse the uh, binary value based on this SRAN value. But uh, the other thing that's possible, let's see, the leaks are super difficult here. I'm not sure how we can get a leak. If we get a leak, maybe there's something on the stack that's interesting, but they zero out all of our buffers, so really nothing on the stack that's uh, of interest to us, but maybe there's some stuff higher up above the canary. I'm not sure. Okay, I'm going to dig a little bit more because it's just going to be me looking at things and trying to come up with ideas, but if, before I try anything out, I'll definitely turn the camera back on. Thanks. All right, folks, I'm back. So what I've been doing is reading up a lot about a lot of good articles about how to mess with and change the um, SSP. So I actually think right now I'm on a not the right track necessarily. So uh, in the sense that I don't think it's going to actually get me to leak the pointer, but um, I wanted to play around with and get familiar with and see what I can change. So we know from looking at the program that we get this stack smashing detected uh, dot slash hash terminated. And the interesting thing here is we get that remotely, 
And what we can actually do with this is we can, so the way this works is actually by doing a lot of digging. Um, what happens is, let's see, bagel, fortify, fail. Yeah, so this is the command that gets called when your check fails. So it calls a libc message, and this two means to execute. And this is the string we're passing in, dollar sign s, which is the message that we're passing in, and then percent s. So the message in this case is going to be stack smashing protected. And then now it's going to pass in here for the second argument libc rb0. So what that actually does is that looks up in the process, where's rb, and then dereferences that to go to rb0. And the really cool thing is I calculated um, up here, uh, I went in, debugged, and I looked at, so this is my buffer that I can overwrite, and this is the target buffer um, where rb0 is. So using this, I should be able to uh, change that value. So essentially what I'm going to try to do that do is I'm just going to try to, I can leak some bytes from the remote process. So um, this can give me some idea about how random uh, the process is being and how random maybe the libraries are. I honestly don't know that this is going to lead us into a, a beautiful ex exploitation scenario, but who knows, you know, we might as well try it and see. And so while I was doing this, I figured, well, this could be interesting. So, you know, even if this is one of those things where it's nice to see that, hey, um, uh, try to see all of the bad paths because this is part of why I wanted to do this video series. It's very easy to read somebody's walkthrough and just think that, like, these people are brilliant. They just do X, Y, and Z and they get the flag. But oftentimes you have a lot of false starts down a lot of paths. But in the meantime, you're learning a lot of interesting things. So. What I'm trying here with this script is I'm trying to, um, so what I realized and what I'm going to try is um, I think what I can do is basically change the argv value on the stack to point into that global variable of that gbuff that gets all of my data. And from there I can construct my own argv pointer to leak whatever I want from the process. So um, and I think I should be able to do this correctly if I pass in so here is, so I'm going to base64 encode my payload. That's what's going to be decoded and copied onto the local buffer on the stack. Um, and doing so will overwrite. So I should have calculated this correctly where I have 512 A's in the buffer. Then I have B, C, D, E, which is going to be the canary value. And then I have um, 68 F's to get that up to where I calculated the arg V parameter is. And then I get rv, and for now I just put in this value because I want to see this baby crash. Um, because I wanted to try to dereference that inside that code that we just looked at of the fortify fail function. Um, and so, and then what, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to append essentially a null byte and then my own value because this the program's using fgets to read in all of my input into the global buffer. So I should be able to put in whatever variables I want in there at the end of this, and it should base 60, I'm hoping it's going to base 64 decode just the things before the null byte, uh, which I believe should work. But this is why we test these things out to see what's going on. So I think with that, I have what I want on the line, yes I do, and so I'm going to send that line, and then I'm going to call, let's see, what am I going to do, oh, on that directive, and then I want to run this and see, so this will, I added a debugging clause at the beginning, um, so it should open up the debugger for us. Ah, the CAPTCHA. <laughs> so we're not actually interacting with this guy yet. So. Uh, okay, so uh, receive until, let's see. Well, okay, this is what I want on until. I want to receive the
regjects. Receive regex. Oh, foiled again by Celine Patches. There we go. Okay. That's 
silly but understandable. So the problem was the n was considered the n was considered optional because of the question mark. We should be good now we can read that in great okay good so okay so the thing I really want to check is what happened to uh, so if I do examine did get our zero byte in there and this 0804 B0 B0. Awesome. All of that got in there. And then what does our stack look like? So we have our go back to our exploit here. We have 512 A's. Then we have our canary we just overwrote, which is B C D E. Then we have 68 F's. Have our 09, 90, 80, 70, 60. So if we continue, we should. Okay, so if we continue, then we'll get into a stack smashing detected, which is exactly what we wanted. Hash terminated. What? Sick of a port. Start this then. Okay, so let's go the backtrace. Ah. Okay, now, now I need to figure out the value. going on? Why is my breakpoints not getting set?
start the process man. Okay, I guess I need to alter its value. So what's the difference between there? So what's the difference between? One, two. Alright, there we go. So now I got this dereference here where it is trying to dereference this uh, EAX. Okay, so I don't actually have to use, because now I'm changing the argv0 pointer on the stack. Apparently it doesn't use the argv pointer and look that up. It just uh, must know where argv is and figure that out. So. And the question is, okay, so basically now I can read any memory location um, in the process, uh, which was really my goal here. Um, and so the question is what I want to read, read LMR. So look at the relocatables. What about like, let's say, what's the value here? Like what's the underscore underscore stack check fail? Detected the space. Let me see. Okay, so it's actually printing out all that. Yeah, it makes sense because of those values. Uh, 80, so F7, 3E, 60, 80, F7, 35, 20, C0. Yeah. So this is going to print out all of the. Yeah, I guess I could do this entire table, but it'll stop when it obviously gets a null value. So. Basically, it's doing stack check all the way down. 
So now the question is, what are those against the real program? That. And do they change next time? So stacks matching detected, and really what I want to do is just like compare this. Uh, space, so 60, 28, so F7, 4A, 28, 60, F7, 4A, 60, so F7, down, okay, scratch. That's okay, and now the question is what happens when I do this again? F7, 47, 8A, 16. F7, 4A, 1, 8, 16. Okay, so now. I mean, I can read out values. So, for instance, if the flag was somewhere inside this binary, then uh, it would be very easy to see that we could then read the flag out with this uh, exploit, because now here we're leaking bytes from the process. Uh, the key problem, though, is that it's clearly killing my application. And so that is not good. So, um, yeah, the question is how do I use this to then control the uh, instruction pointer? Because I can read memory right now, but I can't actually write out any memory. So, uh, I think now that I've proved that this uh, does work and I can leak out memory locations, that's good. But I need to, and I did, so I guess I should. I did go through and look at the um, my hash function. And I know it must exist for a reason. I mean, that's the only thing that really makes sense. But it's pretty uh, clear. I mean, it gets the hash, it uses a buffer on this, it creates a 32 byte buffer on the stack, and then it calls rand and it puts, so 32 bytes, it does eight four bytes of random integers. And then it creates this. So you can see the return value is EAX, which is a bar 30. You can think of this as like a counter or just an accumulator. Uh, and it's EBX. So it's the you know, 16th 4 byte offset minus the 18th 4 byte offset plus you know, all of these other additions. So it's basically combining all of those values that it extracted uh, to try to come up with one value and of course so you know one of the things that you could do is you could say hey is this um, and because we know that this is seeded with time so we know where this is called uh, in main that my hash is called here it's seeded with the current time so you could figure out the current time just by if you know about where it is you can just brute force a bunch of values and keep trying but I don't fail to see how this actually helps you Furthermore, once you know, using, so yes, this my hash will create some values on the stack. Um, I tried looking for the canary in the, you know, before we do our overflow and see if we can find the canary anywhere else that maybe we could try to um, learn and read. Um, I looked at some interesting things online that had a uh, CTF challenge walkthrough where they tried overriding the process. So looking at the, if you could corrupt if any of the other values afterwards would use a printf of a value that you can control, like something on the stack, then you could, like if you control the, the argument to the format string, then you could do a printf vulnerability. 
I don't see that here, so I think for now I'm going to give a rest and work on this uh, while today. So uh, we'll see, and I'll pick back up at a later point. Thanks. All right, folks, I've made a breakthrough. So um, basically, I spent the time thinking and actually not thinking about this project and doing other things. I was just about to start dinner, and I said, you know what? Let's go back, look at it for a little bit. And I was just thinking, okay, so where in this program, what are our inputs to this program? And so I was like, okay, maybe I'll review this my hash function. And I uh, remembered something that I had thought about, but I uh, didn't think about it at the time. So the uh, interesting thing when looking over this, you know, this is a slightly complicated function p2 buff plus 4 plus 14 c8. One thing I didn't notice is that, not, I mean, I did notice, but didn't um, mention or pop to the forefront of my brain, is that this, um, okay, is that the, um, there is no p2 buff 0, which means I thought, hey, maybe there's an overflow here, and that the canary is actually being leaked in this hash to us. And furthermore, when I thought about it, I thought, oh, that actually makes sense because we couldn't get it to where it would give us the same canary if we hit it at exactly the same time. So then I just quickly uh, tried to debug that and to uh, not debug it, but to verify my assumptions. So what I did was I put a breakpoint at the beginning of my hash to fetch out the canary. Where you can see here, this execution in the canary is 339C0500. And then I set a breakpoint right afterwards accessing this, and it's accessing 0005339C0500. So what this means is this means that the canary is actually being included into the hash that's being out, uh, set out for us. And so because this is all just a mathematical formula to get the end value, uh, what we can do is we can actually and, and because it's being seeded with time, we know that we can predict that, which means we can predict all of these random values, and which means we can ultimately get the canary. So this is super awesome, um, because I can definitely see a path forward now. So the idea is, uh, going back to our MD5 calculator, okay, so the idea is with this input captcha, this is the goal. So we need to be able to May need, uh, we may need a few times to do this because it depends on what it thinks is the current time. I think the trick I'll use is that we'll, use, uh, we'll be executing this exploit from their server so that that way it'll be really, really quick. But we obviously want to check this locally to make sure we can do this locally. Now what we need to do is essentially, okay, what we'll need to do is get the same, be able to get the same um, variables out of RAN. The question is, Python RAN. So the question is, is the Python RAN of the same as would C? If not, I need to do so. So I need to make sure that I get exactly those same We still have a lot to go, so hopefully I'll be able to finish this in this go round. Because I'm honestly super tired about thinking about this problem, but now I'm really stoked that we're really close to the end here. So
same regular variable C++. What? I really dug deep into the uh, canary, how canaries work, how the random missing canaries work. So uh, it's good to report that my investigation is just hit the hit. Canaries are secure, so I basically have to try to the, uh, there's 24 bits of entropy, so if you have the first byte of the canary is always zero, so it would have required uh, 16 million guesses, which is not something.
strongly believe this is an important first step. Generating the same random values, we're going to be going to have huge problems. So, Good. Good. All right, they're the same. Awesome. Cool. So we can use this uh, GLIPC random number generator. Is what are we going to do for maybe we need to try the current time and just see if we're right at a few times.
Python is a 64 bit executable and there's a 32 bit executable. Okay, there's gotta be another way to do it.
Plus values four minus.
values 5 plus values 1. Plus values 2 minus values 3. Plus Mary plus value 7. Plus Alright, so this is all just this and swap them. Okay, of course, if I'm making a math mistakes, I will be super embarrassed later on. Actually, you know, it would be a lot of good years. So I believe, let's say, I believe I've uh, calculated values here. So I should be able to say, let's say, Mary is whatever x. And I just make sure I got the equation of the same right. And I can do it in the proper Okay, 
basically I'm going to do this like a memory map operation. So probably I'm just right here to make sure I've got that correctly. Values. Okay, so now I need to verify that it works.
probably the result of getting all of those overflows and everything correct. So
is there a relation between these two numbers? We've got everything. Okay, now we've got the hash, we've got the canary. Gadgets, which is good. Now I'm finally in payload. Oh, 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 oh. Uh, Yeah. 
So I'm going to be down, this is the right down.
words. Oh, perfect. Okay. Yeah, this is super easy. Sorry. Hit the microphone in my excitement. So I was thinking, okay, what's on the stack? So what's going to be the argument to obviously we control what's on the stack and we know we can shove additional data inside of our base 64 encoded uh, payload. So we can figure out exactly where that is. We can know exactly where that is in memory. That's the fixed memory location. We put that on the stack and then now we've jumped to system. So now we're going to jump. Seg call because it can't break the memory address. Awesome. Okay, I did just break it there. That's so. Do I want to do that? Option one of the two signs. I think I don't think it's there. The, the time value is exactly 100% correct. Okay, great. So I do want to call system, and I'm going to want to call system. After that, so we'll get to system. System will think that, so it will be a ret, so it thinks that the next value should be jump. So the next value will be the return value of where system will return to. Obviously, we don't want system to return anywhere. Then uh, plus. It's at 0804 B34. So now I want to change this value that I'm passing in there back to 0804 B34. Which will be this. And remember, we know again that that's exactly the right address. So System, and we can see that we have this fake save the IP and then our NSH string. So next, next, next. So 
my fault. It's my fault. the deal, yo. Okay, so single step.
Thanks, thanks a lot. Hopefully you learned some things. I know I 